Welcome to the Sewing Sanctuary Isle of Wight. I'm Sue Pillsworth from the Sewing Sanctuary helping you to work your magic with fabric. I hope to encourage you by making a drawstring bag. Great for popping presents in, no more need for wrapping paper and the beauty is they can be used many times for gifts and of course a handy storage solution. So take out your sewing machine, thread up and let's get creative. There are three types of bag which I am going to show you. The simple side drawstring, the lined crossed over drawstring and the lined double side pull drawstring. These handy little bags can be made from many different types of fabric. I find that medium weight fabric works well such as cotton or linen. You could use recycled fabrics from garments or soft furnishings. Tea towels work very well. Fat quarter squares can be used and nowadays they are sold in many supermarkets and craft shops. Fortunately, there are many different online fabric stores and you can easily purchase fabric from there. Be aware that if the fabric has a one-way design, Care must be taken when cutting out, as the pattern could fall upside down on one side of the bag. You may need to consider a cutting plan which involves seaming at the bottom of your bag. It is advisable to plan what you intend to put in the bag before you start. Make it large enough to accommodate the, the gift. Allow for some wiggle room as well as the standard 1.5 cm seam allowance necessary for construction. Once you've mastered the quick construction techniques, you may wish to personalise future bags with applique, embroidery, patchwork and quilting. But remember, it is advisable to work any embellishments before bag construction, otherwise it can be tricky to achieve a good result. Let's start to work our magic with fabric. Firstly, I'm going to show you how to make the simple side drawstring bag. I've decided to make a bag to fit this book. The book is approximately 15 centimetres wide by 22 centimetres long. I have folded my fabric in half and I have allowed at least five centimetres on either side of the book and approximately 14 centimetres at the top, which will give me a reasonable fold over for the um, drawstring casing. Now before we begin to sew it is advisable to fully understand your sewing machine and how we can accurately sew straight lines to produce quality work. If my needle position is centralised then the second line on the throat plate which is the metal plate on the sewing machine that is a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. If I change my needle so that it is to the far right, then the distance from the edge of the foot and on the edge of the fabric is 5mm. This is important when we come to do our French seams. The final important measurement that we need to know is that if the edge of the presser foot runs along the edge of the fabric and the needle is centralised, that becomes a 1cm seam. Again, that's important for our French seams. Okay, so we're ready to begin. We're going to take our piece of fabric, which we've already cut. That will be 25 by 72 centimetres, and we're going to start construction. So we're going to fold the fabric in half, and we're going to concentrate on the opening of the turn down fold which our drawstring will be going through. So we're going to measure from the top edge seven centimetres and we're going to slash into the main body of the fabric for one and a half centimetres. When you have done that, you are going to take a little fold of fabric, fold it over and finger press and fold it over again to form 
a neat little hem along that seven centimeters. Place the pin in it and get ready to sew. When you start to sew, please be careful where you start by putting the needle into the edge of that fold accurately. Place the presser foot down and start to sew. I always do three little stitches and a reverse sew to secure the threads and to stop them unravelling. Sew nice and carefully along that folded edge and remember reverse sew when you come to the end. Because you've secured the threads you can trim those threads off really close to the end of that stitching line. You do that on both sides. Fold them together so that the wrong sides are facing and you can see the outside edge. We're now going to work the French seams. You are now going to produce your French seams by sewing the first line five millimeters in from the raw edges. Remember to do a reverse sew at the beginning and at the end of each line of sewing. You're going to concentrate on keeping that stitching line nice and straight. Remove any pins before you get to them. And remember, come to the end, reverse sew. Trim off thread's ends as you go. And you've got a nice straight line. You're now going to trim that seam, although it's narrow anyway, you're going to take approximately one millimetre off the edge, which removes any little burrs or beards of thread. You're now going to repeat that process on the other side. So you are going to make sure that your raw edges are together and level. And when you come to sew on the sewing machine, please ensure that when you do your reverse sewing, the stitches that you do in reverse lie directly on top of the original stitches. That makes for a very neat finish. You're going to machine, making sure that you don't sew over any pins. Remove the pins before you get to them. If you're unsure about that, you could always put them in horizontally, but I would advise you not to sew over pins whenever possible. Once you've reverse sewed, you can trim and clip and then I'd like you to take off the, the raw edges to about, um, to leave two millimetres. Okay, so once you have sewn the first line of machining, you are advised to press that seam. Now you can press that seam open. It's very narrow and it's quite a tricky operation. And if you have got a special um, ironing sleeve board, then I advise you to use it. You can put a dowling rod or the, the handle of a wooden spoon up inside there so that you can really get it into that seam allowance and press it open. By pressing it open, it will help you turn that seam so that it's nice and crisp when we come to do the next stage. When you've done both sides, you then need to turn the piece of work so that the wrong side is facing outermost. actually see the seam allowance there. It's very narrow but it's nice and flat. When you come to turn the bag to the, to the wrong side you need to poke out your ends so that your, your little corners are nice and crisp. Use your scissors but don't poke your scissors through the end. Just gently tease it out and because you've spent the time pressing 
that seam should fold so that it, be, it forms a lovely sharp edge. If you don't do the pressing um, of the seam open, then it can in fact fold over and look unsightly. All that's left to do now is of course machine along that edge one centimeter in from that folded edge. If you're uncertain, you can put some pins. If you put them in um, like I have just done, one centimeter in from the raw edge, or sorry, from the folded edge, then please be careful when sewing, remove your pins first. So to get that one centimeter sewing line, I am going to make sure that that folded edge is on the edge of my foot and that my needle is centralized. I'm going to work some stitches forward, reverse sew over the top, and then carefully sew all the way down to the slashed edge for our turnover. Now we're going to do the other side exactly the same and as you can see the raw edges from our seam are encapsulated in between those two lines of machining. It's a really strong, very versatile stitch uh, seam. There we have it. All that's left to do now is to turn the bag the right way out, poke out our edges and make sure that our points are nice and neat. Give it a little press and we'll be ready to turn down the um, next edge. There's, there's a, a final look at our beautifully finished French seam. We're now going to just do a little bit of top stitching along um, the French seam on the opposite side to the opening side. All we're going to do is run a line of top stitching along the folded edge, across the bottom and back up to the top. This will prevent um, it, the drawstring sticking into the seam allowance when you come to thread it through. And if you've ever had that happen to you, you will understand how frustrating it is. So just run a neat line of top stitching, seven centimeters down from the top edge along that seam. It looks like that. Now, we are going to form the casing at the top. You're going to turn down one centimeter, followed by three centimeters. So we're creating a three centimeter deep casing. Make sure you're accurate. When you've turned that down three centimeters, it should 
fall level with the top of that original French seam that we created. Place your pins in very carefully and just make sure that you measure three centimeters down from the top all of the way around. It is definitely worth spending a little bit of time making sure that this stage is accurate because once you've done your top stitch line it's disheartening if you have to remove it. When you come to do the opposite side of the opening it would be advisable to double check that they are level and that when you place your pins in you can see that the line of top stitching that you will be sewing soon will be straight. Now I'm going to place that underneath the presser foot, taking care not to get any of my pins in the way. Placing my presser foot down and accurately lowering my needle into position will help me with a good starting position. Remember to reverse sew, ensuring that your stitches lay on top of one another and then very carefully machine around that folded edge. Take your time. It's advisable if you have to stop to make sure that your needle um, falls down into the fabric and then it will prevent it from, um, from jumping or missing stitches. When you come to join up with the first line of stitching that you did, please aim for an accurate line. Keep your stitches all in line. Trim off the thread ends, trim them off as you go. It does make it a lot easier at the end. I have decided to run another line of stitching, the foot's width apart, um, above that original line that you've just sewn in order to make a nice strong finish. As you can see I'm making full use of my sleeve arm on my sewing machine. Some of you will have um, the ability to remove the little tabletop so that you can actually sew around nice and easily without getting any fabric caught underneath that shouldn't be there. Okay, I finally matched up my stitching, trimmed off my thread ends again, and all I have left to do now is make the drawstring. To make my drawstring, I've cut a strip of fabric three and a half centimetres wide and it's approximately 54 centimetres long. I'm going to fold my long strip in half lengthways and give it a little press. You can of course use ribbon, you can of course use tape or cord for this, but I'm just showing you how you can easily make um, a self fabric tie. You're now going to open up that folded fabric and then fold the raw edges to meet that central pressed fold line that you've just done. Fold it again 
and there we have a neat little tie. Pop that underneath the sewing machine and you're going to sew along that folded edge. Be very careful and very accurate here. If you sew a few stitches and then refold the fabric, you should be able, and with practice, these actually form quite easily. As you can see, I have lowered the needle into the work in order to manipulate the fabric and then carry on. If you didn't lower the needle into the fabric, then you could end up with long loops of thread, extra stitches, it could look a little unsightly. So work out your best method of doing this. This is possibly one of the quicker ways. There are many other ways. But for now, this is good practice in manipulating fabric. So there we have our tape. We're going to now thread it through the top channel of our drawstring bag. I have got a very long safety pin. It's quite lethal, so be very careful. And then you're just going to thread the pin through the top. There should be no problem going over that seam because of course we made that effort to sew that down and then out it comes the other side. Take care not to pull it all the way through or you have to do the whole process again. Now we're going to do a little overlaid seam to secure those, um, those thread ends. And all we're going to do is lay one on top of the other, change our sewing machine onto a zigzag stitch and we are just going to sew forward and backward. This stitching line will not be seen. Make it nice and secure. Now, very carefully, Slide the drawstring around the back until you can feel that that overlaid seam lies roughly in the centre. And all you're going to do now is run a forward and reverse stitching line just about a centimetre in length to secure the drawstring in place. All that's left to do now is to pop the book inside the bag, check for size, make sure you're happy with it. There we have it, our first simple little side drawstring bag. This production was brought to you from Sue's Sewing Room, the sewing sanctuary on the Isle of Wight. If you wish to get in touch with us, then feel free to email or phone and we look forward to hearing from you.